The moment from these two would not be, and the moment from these two would not be, and this whole side would be totally different, not equal the same thing, but now you would do just I, the center of mass, times alpha 2, and you'd be good, okay? And so it might simplify things to do that. Okay, or again, you can pick any point you want as long as you follow these equations and get two things that are equal, okay? This simplified goes to this, and you'll see it's the same as the last lecture, okay? Or sorry, the static example, okay? Okay, so we do the same thing on three. It's the same free body diagram from before. The left side is always going to be the same, but now instead of zero, we again do mass times acceleration. Same thing with this, uh, you know, the y components, mass times acceleration of the center of mass and the y component. And, uh, you know, we could, again, pick any point to do some, the, the torques uh, or the moments, um, right? And so we could pick A like we did last time, and so the left side of the equation is all the same. But now, check it out, now we have to do all this ugly stuff because we did IA alpha plus M3 and it would have to be 1 half r3 because it's the vector that points from there to the center of mass cross the acceleration of a3 which now is not zero so none of this could cancel okay so that's very messy and you could see if you do all the math out this simplifies to what we simplified before and this stuff simplifies to this and I'll let you look at that at home um, but you know we don't like vectors in our you know break it up into the components keep the sign of the convention the same and it's all correct okay now again maybe it would have been easier to take the sum of the torques about this point the center of mass and you know mg would have gone away on this this left side and we would have just uh, taken the cross product of all these forces you know the vector that goes from there and the cross product of this force that goes in there cross product of that force and then we would have set it equal to just I, the center of mass, times alpha 2, or sorry, alpha 3, okay? And we wouldn't have had to deal with all this. So it's up to you, whatever is easiest for you, okay? But as long as you're correct, you'll get the right answer. Okay, and then same thing. We do, for 4, you know, you go through, you do the two X and Y components, and in this case, we took the thing about C, which is not a bad point, because it's what we did last time, so you can use the same thing. But really, the nice thing is, remember, the acceleration at C is zero, so the whole other part of this cuts off, and you just have the moment inertia about C, okay? which you could find if you have the moment inertia about this point, the center of mass, add that to the mass times this distance squared, and now you have the moment, mass moment inertia of C, right? For, by the parallaxis theorem, okay? And it's all going to be correct. So, and again, uh, we simplify this to that equation. And now, uh, you know, you have the nine equations and the nine unknowns. And remember, you have to just remember to set, you know, F3, 4X equals negative F4, 3X. And all those, all those things, use all those equations, plug those in for the same thing. You've got your nine equations, your same nine unknowns, and you would pull those out into matrix form, uh, which I didn't show here. But you can go back to that past example, and I actually want you to do this, um, you know, uh, uh, for this lecture. Use these new nine equations, you know, here, you know, equation one, equation two, equation three, okay, four, five, and six, seven, eight, and nine. Use those new nine equations, pull out the same nine unknowns, make them in matrix form, and invert them and everything, and show how you could use that matrix form, solve for the things you wouldn't know. And the things you wouldn't know would be M2 and, uh, right, and, and then the internal forces, the forces at the joints. And they would be for whatever dynamic scenario you specified, whatever those alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 4 is that they wanted, and, uh, you know, with the accelerations at the centers of mass that they specified. Okay, and they wouldn't have to ex specify those centers of mass. If they just gave you alpha two, alpha three, alpha four, you could use um, acceleration difference, you know, equation uh, to to march from point to point and find those accelerations. Okay, so so okay, so with that, uh, congratulations, um, you are literally now a, a mechanism analysis master. If I gave you uh, any mechanism that's planar. Uh, you know, you could um, do position analysis, uh, velocity analysis, acceleration analysis, 
Uh, you could do all those for any point on those mechanisms. Uh, you could also use power equation to find external forces and you can use all the examples I just gave you in topic 7 to find those external forces as well as internal forces and, and analyze whether things are going to buckle or yield or any of those things and know everything about the mechanism it's, and have it fully characterized. Okay, And you can use these inversely to then design mechanisms and, and do clever things. So with that, uh, congratulations. Uh, you're done with this topic.